Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching and today I have the Wallace to Sterling part 3 for you guys. So, why don't we just get into the video? Well, look, usually it's the Wallace formula there, but this time it's the Sterling approximation, which is this. And the Sterling approximation actually has many forms, one of which looks like this. So, we can transform this sterling into so i'm going to change that first of all into n to the power of n times n to the power of 1 over 2 which is square root of n so the top stays the same the bottom is n to the power of n times square root of n okay and this is equal to square root of 2 pi and we can multiply these two there so the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial times e over n is equal to square root of n times square root of 2 pi is equal to square root of 2 n pi and then times n to the power of n. And now we divide the e to the power of n so we'll get the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial is equal to this will stay the same. But then, n to the power of n over e to the power of n is equal to n over e to the power of n. And this formula is actually super useful, as we can approximate any factorial. And this is actually widely used in engineering and mechanics. So, we're actually not going to focus on this one. We're going to still focus on this one. And um, I'll write the Wallace formula as well. So the Wallace formula. And this is the Wallace formula. So the method is to use a known limit slash the Wallace formula to prove an unknown limit. The Sterling approximation. So, our first step is to define a n to be this. Right? And then, now, let's see. Hmm. We see the Wallace formula. We have squares, right? But for the Sterling, we don't have any squares. So this implies that we should take the square root on both sides for the Wallace formula. So we'll get the limit is n goes to infinity of the bottom is 2n minus 1 double factorial without the square. And don't forget to square root that times the square root of 2n plus 1. And then the top is 2n double factorial. And this is equal to the square root of pi over 2. Okay? And now look. In the Sterling approximation, we have factorials. But in the Wallace formula, we have double factorials. Hmm. Well, that implies that we should change these double factorials into normal factorials, right? But how do we change 2n minus 1 double factorial into a normal factorial? Well, it's easy. Just fill in the blanks, right? So the blanks that we need to fill in are the even terms, which is, in other words, 2n double factorial. So we should multiply the top and bottom by 2n double factorial. And now I'll erase this, because we already know that. So it's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of... Once we multiply the bottom by 2n double factorial, we'll get... 2n normal factorial times the square root of 2n plus 1 and the top is 2n double factorial squared but i thought the point of taking the square root on both sides was to get rid of the square but it seems like we've made it more complicated well let's first ignore that first let's try to change 2n double factorial into a normal factorial and this is actually a really important skill. 
So two n are even terms, right? So an even term double factorial is equal to two times four times six, all the way to two n, right? And let's see, two is equal to two times one, right? Four is equal to two times two. Six is equal to two times three. And we'll multiply all the way to two times n, right? This is common sense. But this is actually a really good technique. Look, one times two times three, all the way to n. That's a factorial. And before we move on, I'm just going to say that this these steps are all under the assumption that the Stirling approximation, the limit, actually exists. And some of you might be complaining, well, don't we know? Well, we're actually assuming that we don't know. So, this is part three. In the next part, part four, we're going to prove that the limit exists. Because if it doesn't, then every single step we've gotten to right now are all invalid or fake. So, we won't get to that answer. So, anyways, right now we're just assuming that it exists. So, these are all correct, hopefully. Well, can we fact so going back here, can we factor out these twos out? Right? But the question is, how many twos? Well, n twos. So it's two to the power of n times in the bracket, it's one times two to n, which is n factorial. Wow, nice. So we can change this limit into the limit is n goes to infinity of the bottom will stay the same and the top will be this squared so remember at the start when i said we're going to use a known limit to prove an unknown limit well the question is how well, look, don't forget this. We have defined a n to be this, right? So, let's see. We've expressed this in terms of n factorial. And just a little note, we still know that this is equal to square root of pi over 2, okay? So, if we try to write n factorial in terms of a n, then we can plug n factorial in terms of a n into here, and we'll get a known value, right? So maybe good things will happen and things will cancel out and we'll get a limit as n goes to infinity of a n and this will equal some value because we know this limit is equal to this value. So that's actually what we're going to do. So we know here that n factorial, I'm going to skip some steps, is equal to a n square root of n times n over e to the power of m. Okay, and we've actually technically done this already when we've written this in a different form. We t we've technically already done this. Okay, now is the is the hard part, and it's the part where we'll probably get wrong. Oh, and one more thing, we're going to open the brackets for this. Okay, so let's see. This will be two to the power two n times n factorial squared, right? So, that being said, equal to 2 to the power of 2n times n factorial squared. Okay, now, this is the long part. The limit is n goes to infinity of that 2 to the power of 2n stays the same, times n factorial is this. And don't forget to square it. And the bottom is 2n factorial. Well, that's actually really easy to solve because we can just replace every single n from here with 2n. Okay, so now we can also replace 2n factorial with this. And this time it's without a square.
And this is all equal to the square root of pi over 2. And right now, I'll give you some time to digest this. Okay, done? Well, moving on. We'll first unpack this. So it'll be a n squared, normal n, n over e, 2n, right? So I'll just do that right here. We need this. And then it becomes a n squared times normal n. And then times n over e, so we have 2n. Now, look, 2n over e to the power of 2n, so it's actually equal to 2 to the power of, so uh, 2n over e to the power of 2n is actually equal to 2 to the power of 2n times n over e to the power of 2n. Okay, and look, this, that, this, and that. Cancel! So, that means that this, that, and that cancel each other out. And I'll just rub all of this out to give me some space. So, we'll get the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, I'm going to put everything in terms of a n to the right and everything without a n to the left. So, this is equal to, well, if we put this, if we multiply two square roots, then we multiply the inside. And I'll just unpack them for you guys. So it's the square root of that times that is 4n squared. And then plus 2n. And then the top is just normal n. And then times a n squared over a2n. And this is equal to square root of pi over 2. Don't forget that. So, of course, the limit is n goes to infinity. It's equal to the limit is n goes to infinity of a of 2n, right? Because n is going to infinity. So these two should be equivalent, right? So, a2n is actually equal to a n. And a n squared over a n is equal to a n. Right? So, we'll get the limit is n goes to infinity of a n times, now we need to solve this. So, we solve the limit is n goes to infinity of square root of 4n squared is 2n. And now, I'm going to divide the n to the bottom. So it'll be 1 over n times the square root of this thing. And if we want to multiply the 1 over n into the square root, we have to multiply by 1 over n squared, right? So this is actually equal to the limit. This n goes to infinity of, well, 4n squared times 1 over n squared is 4. And then plus 2 over n, and the top is 1. We, now we can plug in n is equal to infinity. 2 over infinity is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. So this is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so it's this times 1 over 2. And this is equal to square root of pi over 2. Well, look, good things did happen. So I will just write all of this up here. Therefore, we know that the limit of n goes to infinity of a n, or this, is equal to 2 times the square root of this is equal to the square root of 4 times this, which is square root of 2 pi. Very cool. This is not strict. If we want it to be strict, then we need to prove the limit, that this limit actually exists. So, that's for a later video, and that's the end of this video. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy my video and you enjoy content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.